Caitlin here from Launch the Damn Thing. I wanted to talk about how to create an archive of your blog posts on your website with no plugins. I know, right? That seems like it's impossible. <laughs> it's not actually, and I just did it on my own website. So now I'm gonna show you how to do it on your website. And if you've been around for a while, you had a 7.0 website, and you've now moved over to 7.1 and you're wondering, whether those summary blocks are still needed to design a blog page that actually looks decent, I'll be answering that question too. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you how to do it step by step. Squarespace has had some blog limitations for a few years now and it wasn't until version 7.1 was released sometime around 2020 that we started to get more, well, more. <laughs> So it's hard to go back that far because I don't have any clients that are currently using the old method of styling the blog page anymore. So I recreated this on a 7.1 site so I can just show you what it looks like. I also have my old blog, what's left of it, on my 7.0 Brine family template so you can see the difference. Just to start here, you can tell that whatever the navigation looked like up here, you just have the feed and that's it. You can't add sections underneath it. You can't add sections on top of it, which means you also can't give the page a freaking title, which is dumb. <laughs> no wonder countless people were trying to figure out how to make their blog look more interesting, more user-friendly, because you couldn't do that on the Brian family or any other template in Squarespace on 7.0, what we ended up doing was we would create our own page and customize it and pull in the blogs with summary blocks. So this is something that you could have done on any custom page in Squarespace in 7.0 or in 7.1. You can do it in both versions of Squarespace. You just don't need to in 7.1 anymore. This is what it might have looked like, a custom page where you can say like, welcome to our blog. This is what we do here. You could add a search block and archive block for a drop down on your categories. And then underneath that, you would have a series of text for your heading, a text block, Underneath that, a summary block, and I've highlighted it just so you can see the summary block. I don't think you have the ability to put a background color on blocks without custom CSS in version 7.0, but just so you can see. So what you would do, text, summary, text, summary, text, summary, and then on the posts that show up in this section, you would already have to have in place a series of tags and or categories that would allow you to filter each summary block to show the thing that you're telling people you're showing here. The main thing is that when you create a new post, you would have to tag it knowing that it's going in a specific section of your styled blog page. What I did, because it was not feasible for me to organize it by month like this, I actually did it by tag and the tags were quarters for the year. So about three or so months at a time and one for every quarter. So I would do it in groups, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and then it would have anywhere between five and 10 posts for that quarter. I was either doing weekly or every other week posting at that time. Just keep in mind that summary blocks give you a limit of 30 posts per block unless you have the Square Websites Pro Tools extension, which will allow you to extend that to up to 250 posts per summary block. So just know whatever system you implement, it has to be able to contain no more than 30 posts per summary block unless you have that extension. And this whole post is to show you how to do this without plugins. That's why I say there's a limit on the summary block and what it can pull in, just make sure you're within the limit. Okay, so this is the styling and you would just continue on down the page in that same vein, right? That's the blog styled, often used on 7.0, but like I said, on 7.1, you don't need that anymore. So what we do on 7.1 is we have the default blog page. We add a section with custom content in that on the top of the feed. And then on the bottom of the feed, we add another section with other custom content. 
You can actually add multiple sections if you wanted to break down more information, like a bit about meet the author of the posts or links to other things or a call to action. There's all kinds of things that you can do that are more custom on the 7.1 blog than you can do on the 7.0 blog. What we're going to look at today is how to build a blog archives page without any plugins. So if you have a lot of posts, you want people to be able to find them. This is how you can build this page and we're gonna go through it step by step. Let's dive in. If you don't happen to know which one your website is, then just go into your help from the main menu. Look down here at the bottom and it'll tell you version 7.1 if that's what you have. If you don't, then you need to go into design and then look at your template. And if it tells you what your template is, um, then you're gonna be on 7.0 because that's when templates actually mattered. 7.1 does not matter. Templates are all the same. They all have the same functionality. It's just how close is the starting point to the end result that you want. And they all can do the same thing. In 7.1, whether you're in Classic Editor or Fluid Engine doesn't matter. It applies to both as long as you're in 7.1. Now that I've talked about that, in a previous post, we walked through how to build this view for your blog on 7.1. And that looks great. But what if you want to actually have a legitimate archive? Well, that's actually pretty easy to build too. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll do a blank page because that's how I always prefer to start. I'm going to call this blog archives and we're going to edit the page. We're going to create a new section. I'm in fluid engine, so I'm going to do that. It works the same with classic editor. You're just going to have a little bit different mobility with moving things around the page. We're going to have a text block for the page title, blog archives, and we're going to make it heading one. And we're going to drag that up to the top. Next, we're going to add a search block if I can spell. And we're going to drag that maybe over here and make that block a little different. And then we're going to add a series of archive blocks, but I want to categorize them by name. So I'm going to do another text block and we're going to drag that down here. We're going to call it. This is going to be the label for the archive block underneath it. So I'm just going to leave that maybe in heading four. Now we're going to add an actual archive block. So if you search through the block picker menu, you'll find it. It's easier to just use the search bar. We're going to click archive and this is the default setting. Drag all the way across. Now we're going to go into it and choose the settings for this archive block. So we're going to click the pencil icon. We're going to choose the source material where it's pulling data from, and then we're going to go up to display, and then we're going to select one of the other options. So index, as you can see, creates an actual index based on whatever the parameters are that you set. In this case, it's grouped by month and it's showing the item date. I just want a list of categories. So I'm going to have it break into multiple columns automatically. That looks good. I'm going to keep it left aligned and I'm going to organize it or group it by category. So let's keep it sort by name and we'll show group count so that people can see how many posts are in each category. Looks good. Now you'll notice this is not exactly aligned. There's nothing you can do about that without CSS. So if you don't like the spacing there, then I would go in and change the alignment to center, or you could actually take the break into columns off keep it left aligned and it would create a column for you. That's categories. Then if we do the same thing, group that and duplicate, by the way, you can't duplicate in classic editor only in fluid engine, which is why I'm using fluid engine for the demo on this post. This is actually going to be month posted. And then we can go in and change this archive block to display by month and that doesn't look great, does it? We're going to just leave it in a column. So maybe we will do that with this one too, so that there's consistency there. So you could actually make your own columns this way. Organize the page like that. Now we're going to copy this. We're going to create a new section, new blank. 
and I'm going to paste that in down here. Now we have the same settings. We just grabbed it from up here and we pasted it into the new section. This one we're going to call all posts and this one is going to be special. So we're going to go into the settings, keep it on blog. And instead of list, we're going to do index, break into multiple columns. We're going to keep it aligned left. And then we're going to group by category. Let's do sort by name. We want to descend the dates, show item date, show item group count, and we're good to go. Now you have a list of all the posts in this website, however many they happen to be. This is like a summary block in that it's dynamic. So every time you add a new post, it gets added to this block, but it's not like a summary block in that it's not limited to 30 items. You don't get the image and you don't get the other cool stuff, but you do get a clickable title that will take them right over to the post and it's automatically gonna stay up to date for you and it's automatically gonna stay categorized for you. So this is a great way to have archives on your website. Now, this looks a little boring. So what are we gonna do with this up here? We could actually drag this over across and then another way that you can actually add a archive block. And before I move on, I just did that by accident because it's so ingrained in my use of Adobe apps, but actually Squarespace just released the edit for Fluid Engine where if you select multiple blocks and hold the option key, which I think is the alt key on a PC, and you notice my cursor changes when I press that key on the keyboard, it turns into a plus sign. So if I click and drag, I am making a copy just with key commands. How cool is that? So if we do categories and then change the settings on this post to show in a drop down, haha, -ha, use it with something like author but don't do tags because there is actually a limit on how much tags it'll show in a dropdown. I've done that once. It will not show all of my tags. I have, I don't know, hundreds maybe by now. So yeah, don't use it with tags. Everything else seems to work perfectly fine though. So we'll leave it on year and that way people can see all the years posted for this particular blog. So let's scoot this into more of the middle. There we go. And let's add a few line blocks for good measure. And we'll duplicate that and add one right here and duplicate that and add one right here. Now, one thing that you will not be used to is on Classic Editor, everything's responsive by the nature of the platform. In Fluid Engine, it is, but it also isn't. <laughs> So if you want this to look good on mobile, you have to remember to check the mobile view and you know that there are changes to look at over there when there's a little blue dot over there on this icon. So if I click that, let's first actually change this color to something a little lighter so we can see the difference between the top section and the bottom section. If we switch over to mobile view, I added that first, I added that second, I can change the size of that block. I added that third, then fourth, and then I duplicated that together and made that block fifth, did the same thing for these two, and then I added the three line blocks last. So they're actually showing up at the end of the section because those are the last things that I added. On mobile view, it's not organizing your content in the order that it's laid out like it did in Classic Editor it actually adds it in the order that you added the elements to the page. So that's really important to keep in mind. That's not to say that you can't change it though. Thankfully, <laughs> Squarespace recognized that this would become a problem. You just have to remember to go in here and edit it for mobile specifically, and it does not affect desktop. So if we grab the line block and we drag it up, drag it up, drag it up, now we can put them back in the place where they belong. And if you want to rearrange some other little elements, you can do that here. And then make the section a little shorter. And that looks pretty user friendly. We'll switch back to desktop and see if anything changed. No, it didn't. So that is where Fluid Engine is shining. Now, I will say 
the in-between, everything between desktop and mobile is a little shaky, not going to lie. It is responsive, but it's weirdly responsive. Sometimes it does some weird things. So, and because there's literally no way to edit anything in between, you basically just have to go with it and make sure that it looks as good as possible in whatever layout you set for desktop, because that is what it will use until it switches to the mobile grid. And what I mean by that is if you press G on your keyboard while you're in Fluid Engine, you can see the grid that you're designing on in the background. So it's made up of a group of cells and all of your blocks overlap those cells. On a desktop all the way down to a tablet, we get 24 columns all the way across. In Classic Editor, we had 12. You just didn't know that because you could never see them but that was the maximum amount of columns you could put on a page. In Fluid Engine, you get 24 columns of cells and then up to about 100 rows, I believe. So you can extend the section up to 100. On mobile, it's compacted. So because the screen is narrower, you actually only get eight columns and about 100 rows. I don't know that I've ever actually made a section that long, especially not on mobile. So I, I'm not willing to say with any confidence that you can actually have 100 rows on mobile. That's the theory. I've not tried it myself. That's the way responsiveness works in Fluid Engine. Now, if you do this and you're like, okay, it looks great on desktop and mobile. Those are the only two things that I can see. Let's go ahead and save these changes. So this is our new archives. We can link that somewhere in the footer. If you want people to have access to it, people can see the years posted in that really cool drop down. Next, we're going to investigate what this looks like uh, smaller screen sizes. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do. If you right click on your mouse and you go down to inspect in a Chrome browser, you can inspect the website on different screen sizes. You can ignore all the code stuff over here if you want to. You can resize that area. What you're looking for is this device toggle. So if you click that, get a responsive window with these little grab bars right here on the on the right side and on the bottom and that will let you resize the height and width of the screen if we press that we have the full screen version and now we can see how this website is reacting <laughs> It does help if you are not logged in, obviously. Squarespace knows that I'm logged in and it's not designed to work in smaller screen browsers. So that's only gonna get you so far if you're, if you're actually logged in. Now, what do you do if you are logged in? Let's go back. We're actually gonna grab the free domain that comes with your website, copy, and we're gonna go to settings, site availability, and we're gonna set a password just a really basic one. You can be draft, demo, whatever you want, and then click save. Okay, that's where we're going to stop. Now we're going to go look at a new app. If you haven't downloaded it yet, go ahead and do it. It was free. Basically, it lets you have multiple iframes, which is what it's called in the HTML. So it loads a website within a website within a website within a website. <laughs> so it'll load a website in full, just like it would show you on your iPhone, on your Pixel, on your Nexus, on your iPad mini, on your Kindle Fire, whatever the things are, all in one window. So you can actually use the websites together they're all clickable, they're all scrollable, they're all live websites, but it's just showing you multiple screen sizes as you're browsing. So go ahead and download that. It's responsively.app. You can go ahead and download it now. And that is where we will take a look at our brand new website. As you can see, this app is something that I actually use when I'm checking client websites for mobile issues. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the search bar in the Responsively app. We're going to paste in that free domain for our website, and we're going to do something extra special to the end of it. If you type question mark password equals and whatever the password is in the same title case that we set, in this case, lowercase draft and hit enter it will load the demo site for you and put in the password so that it loads as if it were live. It's not a published site. It's a password protected draft site. 
but we're going to be able to look through it as if it were live. So if we go to the navigation, we can do the pull out menu and you notice that it only pulls it up on the two that are mobile responsive where the mobile menu is activated, not on the desktop version, which is what the iPad Pro thinks it is, not on the MacBook Air, which is the small screen, and then not on the MacBook Pro 16 inch, which is the larger laptop. So we're going to go to blog archives and it's going to load this page on all of the windows within this window, which is kind of like website inception, right? Now we can actually look at how this acts responsively across all of these. And you'll notice there's a little bit of funky spacing underneath here that I don't love, but it's not actually inter acting negatively with the elements. So I think I'm just going to leave it there. Let's see how it looks on the MacBook Air. We're actually good to go. So I think we're good. Now I'm going to close out of this because it's definitely a memory hog. It's going to take up a lot of your computer's power while you have that open. So I'm going to close it out, make sure I actually close, close it, quit. There we go. Okay. So now we have a brand new blog archives page. We have all the posts listed. They are linked. So if someone clicks on any of that, they can go right into the post itself. They still have all of the native like pagination that's included with the blog because they end up on the blog from these links. And like I said, they're all dynamic. So they update for you. If you add new categories, they will automatically show up in the archive block list that we've added here or months posted, they'll add here, and the years, they add here. So it's all going to stay up to date for you, and your readers will have a good place to go search through everything. One of the other things I think we all know now, but just in case you don't, if you're on a live site like this one and you want to look through, there's like too many posts, and you're looking for something specific, and you know that this one keyword is in that thing, if you do command F or control F on your keyboard and you type in the word, it'll actually highlight all of those instances for you on the page. And if you use the arrows, it actually cycles through them. So you can find something really specifically on that page with just your built-in browser page search. One other thing that you can do is if you click on the edit for the search bar, you can choose to only have the ability to search a specific page. And for this, we're gonna choose the blog. So if they use that search bar, they're only going to be able to search through the blog content, not the entire website, which I think is a pretty cool built-in feature from Squarespace. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to the footer and we're gonna put a link to the new archives down here. So blog is going to link to the actual front facing blog right here, apply. And then archives is going to link to our new page, blog archives, apply. And we're going to click done and let's test it out. <laughs> so if we click on blog, it goes to our beautiful blog page, which also uses, by the way, those archive blocks for the categories over here and the year posted and the search. If we scroll back down, we now have the archives option where they can see all the posts and all the metadata. <laughs> On my own site, this is my blog page on 7.1. I have a summary block pulling in all posts that are filtered to the category video so people know which posts have videos inside. I'm using a universal filter for this, which is a paid plugin. Works fantastically, but it is a little difficult to set up if you're unfamiliar with code. So I highly suggest you pay someone to install it for you if you want it to be customized right out of the box, it doesn't look like this. This is actually a blog collection page, but what I've done is I've added a section on top of it with these elements in it. The universal filter automatically pre-populates these archive blocks in this order at the top of the blog page. So that's not something that are like elements that I've added to the page, that's because of the plugin. Then after that, it's actually just 
the 7.1 default blog section, which you'll notice is paginated at the bottom a little differently, and that's because of the universal filter. The filters up here are putting in categories, tags that I pre-selected, which are all the tools that I talk about in the blog that give you the ability to sort the posts and search through the blog. And every time you change any of these filters, it actually filters down what you literally see here and without reloading the page, which is really nice. The universal filter also adds these pagination numbers to the bottom so that people can see visually how much content you actually have. If you want the pagination, there is a separate plugin for that that you can have by itself, which is very easy to install. It just doesn't come with these filters up here. The universal filter comes with both parts. The pagination can come just by itself. As you can see, I've recently added my own archives page, and so we'll take a look at that. So this is mine with a lot of content. I've actually been blogging since 2016, but I repurposed a lot of that first year's post and rewrote them completely because those first posts were legitimately terrible. So it's only showing the posts that I have repurposed and republished since that time. You can see all of the content organized by category, by year, by month and then by category organized into showing all posts. And I have styled all of this with custom CSS so that there are hover effects when you hover over a link and not when you don't. <laughs> I've also highlighted with the background color all the categories so that you can see them at a glance where they are on the page because there is a lot of content. And if you're wondering, this is a text box by itself. But everything underneath that in this section is one single archive block. So yes, it can keep going and keep populating. <laughs> Every time you add new content, it'll be updated on here for you and you don't have to keep up with it anymore. If you want that option and you want people to be able to, say, search on your page for a specific topic, Let's see all the times that I mentioned Squarespace on this page, <laughs> 101. Okay, well, that wraps up today's post. I hope you enjoyed creating your own blog archive. I encourage you to blog. It's the only way that I market my business and my services now. It is the only way that Google brings me new inquiries. I'm not active on social media. Blogging is my preferred method of helping people. I wholeheartedly believe that this is a way that you can actually make a full-time income in your business by just genuinely putting good content out there for people and helping them find you by existing in more places on the internet because you have all these posts. So um, I hope that helps you create your blog archive and I will catch you in the next video.